Okay, well, today we're going to continue on with our second day of um, our seminar, our series. And this time we are going to talk about a very important topic. We're going to talk about the parents. Okay. I don't know if I got to mention it yesterday. I think I did, but I need to repeat it. Dear teachers, the parents are not enemies. <laughs> okay. But I have to admit, in my 34 years inside the classroom, many times the toughest part of the work is dealing with some parents. <laughs> Not all, because some of them are such a joy to be with, to, to work with, to collaborate with, to partner with, especially if they're very supportive. Pero alam ko, na-experience na rin ninyo, kagaya ng na experience ko yung mga tipong pag ang batang uh, pag ang estudyante yung grade niya bumaba by two points ito ang nanay lulusob sa eskwelahan looking for the teacher asking the teacher ma'am paliwanag nyo bakit bu uh, bumaba ang grade ng anak ko <laughs> parang gusto mong sabihin ah ete ka muna miss uh, missis uh, ba't ako tinatanungin nyo na tanungin ninyo ang anak ninyo anong nangyari bakit ganun ang kanyang grade <laughs> Ako naman, eh, chine-check ko lang ang kanyang test papers. At saka binibigyan ko lang siya ng grade according to the rubrics, according to the standards. Pero minsan may ganyan tayong mga estudyante. Na may maganyan tayong magulang ng estudyante. And it can be very challenging. O kaya, uh, pag binigyan mo ng punishment or consequence, negative consequence, ang isang bata for misbehavior, lulusob ang nanay, ang tatay. Tapos, para bang kasalanan pa natin? <laughs> uh, napanood nyo yung ano, no, diba? yung uh, four wedding, ano yung uh, four sisters and a wedding. Sabi ni Bea Alonso, bakit, bakit parang kasalanan ko? <laughs> ba ba't parang ako pang may kasalanan? Tinulungan ko lang naman ng anak ninyo para lumaking maging mabuting tao. Uh, otherwise, if I don't correct him, if I don't reprimand him, if I don't check his mistakes, ay lalaking masama yung anak ninyo. Pero bakit parang ako pang may kasalanan na tinutulungan ko na nga ang inyong anak na dapat kayo ang gumagawa? I understand. We have had adventures with some parents like that. Okay? Pero wag din nating kalimutan. Maraming ding mga napakagabuting magulang. I mean, Uh, kahit magkaroon tayo ng mga mangilat-ngilang mga magulang na who can be a little thorn on our side. <laughs> Parang si Saint Paul, ano? there's a thorn on my side who is going to free me of this. <laughs> But the truth is, marami rin naman tayong mga magulang na napakabubuti at saka talaga namang they sacrifice a lot for the education of their children. Unang-una na riyan, Uh, ang tuition na binabayaran nila. <clears throat> I mean, let's face it, kahit paano, sakripisyo pa rin sa mga magulang that they choose to, to put their children in a private school, in a Catholic school, in our school, when there are hundreds to choose from. Huwag din natin kalimutan, abay kung wala naman itong mga magulang na nagbabayad ng kanilang tuition, ay wala rin naman tayong pambayad sa salaries ng mga teachers. <laughs> Kaya, um, you know, I mentioned this yesterday. <clears throat> There are many schools that suffer, are suffering, suffered a lot because of this pandemic. Some are not able to survive. But thanks be to God, we are here. We still have work. We are still employed. <laughs> And our school is still alive, continues to thrive even perhaps. Well, we have the parents to thank for that na kahit paano nagtitiwala pa rin sila sa atin. And the fact that there are some that are not surviving, you know what I want to say, mga teachers, fellow teachers, dapat tayong lahat nasa marketing mode. Na, nasa marketing mode tayo dapat lahat ngayon. Ibig sabihin, we have to do everything we can to support our school so that it continues to get enrollment, <laughs> so that it continues to attract <clears throat> families, parents, to continue 
trusting in us. Therefore, let's do our work well. Kahit sabihin natin na, well, uh, that our parents who make life difficult, that our parents who are difficult to deal with, okay, uh, given na yun, I tell you, nagturo ako sa skwelahan <clears throat> na ang tuition ng mga bata is around half a million pesos per year. <laughs> it's an international school. I mean, it's a, a classified as inter- international school. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, nahihirapan. Kahit sila nahihirapan sa um, setup na ganito. And they have to do their best to win the parents over. Ganon din dapat tayo sa ating skwelahan. We have to do our best to win the parents over and then make them collaborate with us. Do our work well, so well, that if one day, one day, kinailangan tayong magpadala ng solicitation letter for sponsorship, for donation, the parents are just going to say, ay oo, oh, magbigay tayo, tumulong tayo para sa teachers yan eh. I know the teachers are doing their best. Ganun dapat ang ating disposition that to the point that if one day we need to get the help of the parents, they are just going to be too willing to give it because they trust us. They believe in us. So, teachers, fellow teachers, I encourage you, in spite of the situation right now, in spite of the fact that Meron tayong ganong mga magulang na minsan nahihirapan tayo. But still, let's do our best for the sake of the children who are counting on us. And then, if effectively, I'm saying, for the sake of our school, out of love for our school, let's do our work well so that we continue winning the trust and confidence of our parents and they continue putting their children in our school. Many of you are parents, if not practically all of you. You know how difficult all this situation has been, this pandemic has been. <clears throat> While you are doing work from home, you also have to supervise your child, <laughs> your son, your daughter, doing home um, online work, synchronous or asynchronous work for school. And you know how difficult it is. As I was saying, galing ako just an hour ago, uh, lunch with the Philippine Women University president. And he has three kids. And sabi niya, grabe, dun ko lang talaga nakita kung gaano kahirap ang pagiging teacher. <laughs> because while, um, while he himself is president of Philippine Women University, he suddenly has to take care of his eldest daughter who is attending kinder online school. <laughs> and sabi niya, ang hirap. Isang lang, isa lang yan. And then naisip ko, ang teacher has 20, 30, sometimes even 40 to take care of online in this setup. Doon na lang daw na-realize Grabe, ang hirap talaga pala maging teacher. <laughs> he himself is not a, an educator. He is a businessman actually. And his family uh, owns <laughs> Philippine Women University, Jose Abad Santos Memorial School. So um, with that, because he is uh, naatasan in the clan to take over the university. So even if he's a businessman, he had to be president. And then nakita niya. With this pandemic, with the parents also helping their children, hopefully, my dear fellow teachers, hopefully, na-realize ng mga magulang ngayon kung gano kahirap ang ating trabaho, right? <laughs> because they suddenly have to be the ones supervising their children at home with this online setup. I mean, our lives changed because of that that day in history when suddenly all of us, the whole country, and then, of course, the whole world was thrown into this online setup. It's been two years. And I have to say, 
parents, teachers, congratulations. So far, you have survived two years of this difficult um, setup. But you know, mind you, 20 years from now, when you ask your students now, when you ask your students 20 years from now, what was most memorable about their schooling uh, experience, they most likely will point to these two years of online setup. And it's because you continued teaching. Marami kaming dapat ipasalamat sa inyo, mga teachers, because you did not give up. You did not quit. Even if it has been tough, even if it has been such a great challenge for all of us. Life, you know, has never been the same. This online setup has thrown us into this situation where uh, talagang na-challenge tayong lahat. Ano? Sabi ko nga sa inyo kahapon, this is not what we have been trained to do. <laughs> this is not what we have been prepared to do. But you continue teaching anyway. I know some teachers who gave up, who said, this is not for me, and so left the teaching profession. But you continue teaching. Maraming salamat that you keep on uh, holding on to this vocation, to this mission that you have. Now, we are dealing with parents. Our topic today is on engaging the parents. And as I said, hopefully, with these first two years of online learning, working from home, na-realize ng mga parents na kung gano'ng kalaking sakripisyo ang binibigay natin para sa mga sudyante. <laughs> uh, something you and I need to accept, admit, is it's stressful. Stressful for the students, stressful for you teachers, and yes, it's also been stressful for the parents. So let's work together. Um, this is not time to start blaming or pointing kung sino ang uh, at fault if the students don't do well. Uh, the situation is so special that uh, this really is simply a time for <laughs> let's work together. Let's collaborate. Let's get the parents to support us. Let's engage them to help us achieve the goals given this online setup that we find ourselves in. Okay? But uh, let's first have that realization. It has been stressful for parents because what we used to do inside the classroom, disciplining John, calling the attention of Joanna, asking Joey to sit properly, parents now are the ones who are supposed to do that at home. <laughs> While the parents are supervising their children and also while they are doing work from home, they need to check on their children who are doing online work, online uh, learning. So, um, mahirap, ano? Parang uh, yung dating tayo ang gumagawa. Uh, we call the attention of students when they are not paying attention, when they are not listening. Now we expect the parents to be the ones to do that. That's why, if you have not done so yet, you should hold an orientation for parents on how you expect them to support the children in this online setup. I'm sure you've done it, but if you have not um, deliberately, systematically uh, spelled out clearly kung ano ang expectations niyo sa kanila, it's not too late to do it. Have a parent assembly soon to discuss that. Or you can do it on a per class basis, which I find even more effective. The class advisor calling on all the parents and laying out clearly to them, ma'am, uh, Mrs. and uh, Mr., ganito po ang kailangan gawin ninyo para matulungan natin ang in inyong anak. Kami namang mga teachers, we really want your sons, your daughters to succeed. We really just want them to be successful. But we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it, especially now when we are in this online setup. We need now the parents to be the ones checking on their children. Oh, nagawa mo na ba yung asynchronous assignment nyo? Nagawa mo na ba yung pinapagawa sa inyong output? Na pag-aralan mo na ba itong uh, exam ninyo? So, 
the parents are now supposed to be the ones doing that from home. Kasi wala ang mga bata sa, ba- sa loob ng classroom natin. Uh, we can only see them uh, on the synchronous and it's not even every single day that we have synchronous class with them. So most of the time, it will now, we will have to rely on the parents. Okay? That's why we need to brief them. We need to orient them. We need to lay down very clearly our expectations for them. It's just not the same. I mean, this is not, it's not like yung ginagawa natin sa classroom, ililipat lang natin online. No, it doesn't happen that way. That's why, you know, I was, um, I'm teaching in a university. Tapos last December, binigyan ako ng course to handle uh, ad- moral development of adolescents. That was the topic. That was the course. And uh, in the face-to-face setup, it's supposed to be seven hours every Saturday for seven Saturdays. Seven hours every Saturday for seven Saturdays. That was supposed to be my schedule with them. I could not do that. I cannot lecture for seven hours, for seven Saturdays, to a housewife and then two teachers who also have, kasi MA students ito mga to, who also have um, lesson plans to take care of. <laughs> so it's not the same. It's not like what you were doing inside the classroom, gagawin mo lang online. No. In fact, as you already feel... <laughs> Uh, even just listening to a lecture like this, like what we did yesterday for an hour, for two hours, it's more tiring. It's more exhausting than actually being in a lecture hall na may coffee pa, no? may coffee station. Every now and then, pwede kang tumayo para kumuha ng cookies, biscuits, and, and uh, take coffee. Pero ito ngayon, ibang klase. No? It's not the same. Now, I understand for teachers, it's even more um, stressful because of one factor. As you are giving your online class, minsan makikita mo yung nanay, yung tatay, aali-aligid dun sa likod ng studyante. <laughs> How do you like it if you are lecturing inside the classroom, tapos nakatayo ang mga nanay at tatay dun, nagbabantay ng uh, para bang... Uh, Huh, paano ba magturo itong teacher na to? Para bang we are being observed. <laughs> That's why they say, research tells us, online teaching can be more stressful than usual simply because you have uh, an audience that you cannot gauge. Minsan pa, nag-off sila ng video, di ba? Hindi mo alam kung nakikinig ba itong mga batang to. I don't see reaction. Are they really listening? O baka naman nakabukas yung Facebook nila, kunyari lang nakatingin sa screen. <laughs> so, it's different, it's more stressful, it's more exhausting. Let's admit it. That's why you have to take care of yourself mentally. <laughs> Itong tinatawag na mental uh, wealth, uh, wellness break, ay talagang totoong kailangan yan. It is not a fad, it is not a whim, Many times, we really, genuinely need it. If there are administrators tuning in right now, please take very seriously the so-called mental health break for the teachers, for the students, and yes, even as well as for the parents. The home has become the school of our children. Well, the truth is, maganda ito. Parabang the pandemic force the parents to remember that you are the primary educators of your children. <laughs> we, are ju- we teachers are here only to collaborate with you, really, to give the technical aspect. Pero the home really is supposed to be the first school of the children. Sabi nga nila, ang mga bata raw, bago pa pumasok ng classroom, ay dapat natutunan niya na sa bahay from the parents. Honesty, hard work, kindness, courtesy, goodness of kara- good morals, uh, GMRC, good manners and right conduct. Sa bahay niya dapat natutunan na yun, di ba? 
kaya mali ang concept ng parents na uh, sir, i-deposit ko ang anak sa classroom ko, sa classroom nyo ha, Bala, bahala na kayo ha. Kaya ako nagbayad ng tuition kasi para kayo na ang magturo. Ay hindi, in principle, we teachers are supposed to only provide the technical things of learning, the technical aspects. Yung how to divide, how to subtract, how to... Pero parents, kayo talaga dapat ang in charge ng teaching the kid hard work, respect, responsibility, courtesy, etc. Now the parents, hopefully, are beginning to see it more clearly. But let's admit, as you also, many of you are parents, this situation is tiring us out more than usual. Sabi ko nga sa inyo kahapon, okay, work from home, teaching from home, pero you're at home. So, because you are at home, abay, ikaw din ang ina-expect na magsasaing, magluluto, maghuhugas ng pinggan, maglilinis ng lamesa, ay nasa bahay ka eh. You're at home. <laughs> so that is an expectation. That's why it has become more stressful than usual for parents. Let's help them as they are supposed to help us as we are helping the students. But let's not be in denial, okay? And therefore, if one day, one of these days, um, may kumausap sa yung parent na parang mainit ang ulo, let's be very understanding. Uh, habaan natin ang ating pasyensya because the situation right now is simply that everyone is being stressed out by the situation. Let us use all the technology available for us, yes, but have that in mind. And then B, here's something I remember mentioning to you in the first series we ran before Teachers, be forgiving with yourself. Be patient with yourself as you also are being patient with the parents, as you also are trying to be patient with the students. This is not a um, normal situation we find ourselves in. Some of you are saying, siguro, alam mo, Mr. Rentoy, hindi ako kasing galing na teacher this year and last year as I was in the past 10 years of my teaching career. Of course, because this last two years have not been normal. Kaya nga ayoko yung ano, tinatawag itong new normal. <laughs> There's nothing normal about this situation, about this setup. We pray that we will get back to the real normal, which we have been trained to do, really. Teaching the students, raising them up to be good men and women inside the classroom face-to-face, -face, without the mask on. Because with the mask on, we are not even seeing their reaction, the joy in their, eye, the joy in their uh, face, uh, the smile. We don't even see those things given this situation right now. Okay? And at the same time, please admit it. Kahit ang mga sudyante ngayon, many of them are uh, stressed out. Suffering what I mentioned yesterday as the pandemic of isolation. Young people deprived of real happy childhood. What is real happy childhood? Being with friends, spending time with friends, wasting time with friends. That's the normal thing. And they are deprived of that, especially nung, uh, itong early part of the pandemic when they were even prohibited from going out of their house. I mean, how would you feel? You are deprived of being able to see these friends that uh, brighten your day. Many of them may be uh, your future business partners. Many of them uh, may be your um, colleagues in work, not just now friends, but friends for life. They, uh, they have been deprived of all these things. So, let us not also uh, be very impatient when they give us excuses like, Sir, mahina ang internet namin. Ma'am, data lang ginagamit ko. Sir, hindi ko talaga na-receive sa email. 
but we will receive all all sorts of excuses like this please don't punish yourself unnecessarily with uh, thoughts like nag nagsisinungaling ba tong batang to baka niloloko lang nila ako ginagamit lang as an excuse yung smart and globe let's take it as it is and then get on uh, do our best as um, whatever we can given the situation but don't punish yourself unnecessarily with thoughts like that uh, leave it at that and then let's continue on um, as best as we can with a given situation simply because this is the present setup that we find ourselves in it's just not the same okay now here are some effects of this online setup the digital lifestyle and the pandemic put together <clears throat> number one <clears throat> many teachers parents as well as students their sleeping habits have been affected because there's netflix because there's youtube because now the kids can say i have to do online work so i have to log into the computer and then some parents allow them to do that even after 10 in the evening 11 in the evening so all of us really apektado ang ating sleeping habits you, you know what happens when you lack sleep Nagiging grumpy, grouchy, maiksi ang temper, <laughs> impatient, mainitin ang ulo minsan pa. Now, you put that together with the parents, teachers, and students, uy, naku, um, crisis situation. So, please, at least for us teachers, let us make sure that our sleeping habits are good, that we are able to get enough sleep. Sabi ng research, seven to eight hours of sleep every day. Less than that, you can get grumpy, grouchy, sluggish, heavy. Kulang sa tulog. Puyat. Difficulty in um, absorbing um, things in our mind. Difficulty in concentrating and in focusing. And our students too. Especially them. Therefore, let us remind parents of this. I don't know if you can send them a memo, a reading material, uh, an assembly where you will remind them about this. Please help your children get the right sleep. Don't underestimate the power of sleep in getting people to be at their best. And then we ourselves, we take care of it. Um, and then we look into, bakit ba ako nagpupuyat? Ah, Kaka Facebook, kaka social media, kaka Netflix. Then we can discipline ourselves better and then take very seriously our sleeping habits. I mentioned feeling of isolation and it's also happening even among us adults, teachers. Dati pagkatapos ng klase mo sa classroom, what do we look forward to? Go to the faculty lounge. And then even maybe lie down in the sofa there, have coffee, and then um, to update si colleague, our co-teachers who have become our best friends to express to them our frustration about that student, about this classroom, about this class. Now you cannot do that. You keep it to yourself. You cannot share it with a friend, a co-teacher, a colleague. Tayo then. Apektado nito, parents then apektado nito, students too are feeling this um, pandemic of isolation. This is something we need to uh, know how to cope with, uh, how to confront. Here's another effect of the pandemic. Dahil bawal lumabas ng bahay, bawal um, to do the physical activities we used to do. For a long time nga, bawal pati yung gym. Ano? So, everyone is living a more sedentary life. Think about it. We find ourselves seated more often than we used to before. <laughs> Dati, pupunta ka ng classroom, you have to walk to the other building, to the other room. You have to go back to the faculty. We did a lot of walking even inside the classroom or even inside the campus. Today, uy, next class na, log on, 
you're still seated. Tapos na yung class. Now I have to attend faculty meeting. Makaupo pa rin tayo. We live a more sedentary life. Let's keep this in mind so that we are aware. Uy, if I am not conscious, I lack physical activity. I am gaining weight. My waistline is growing. I am acquiring more cholesterol in my body. Kulang sa exercise, kulang sa physical activity. We have to be conscious of this because yes, it is affecting even our uh, disposition, our uh, feelings, our moods. We get affected by this. And all these are brought about by the dig uh, digital lifestyle and the pandemic um, setup. And then let's face it, for the students and even for the parents and even for us teachers, a click away from Zoom is Facebook, is Twitter, Instagram, or whatever website it is that we want to go to uh, and for entertainment, for rest, recreation. And then sometimes we have to be sincere enough to admit they can be a distraction. They can prevent us from putting in 100% of our work or of our time spent on productive work. Ay, hindi naman kailangan ng research, pero yes, research says productivity has been affected ever since the invention of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and generally, internet for entertainment. Productivity has been affected. And therefore, if we are not on the lookout, I mean, if we are not conscious of this, we may be um, slowing down <clears throat> in the effectiveness of our work. Really, we have to take care of ourselves given this situation that we find ourselves in. Um, being even very conscious of our posture. You know, kung hindi ka conscious, uh, especially yung uh, we are in front of the computer, Minsan meron ako nakikita ang nagtatrabaho, nakaganyan, naka no? And hindi niya, kung hindi siya conscious, hindi niya realize na for two hours, nakaganon siya. No wonder he will complain of pain in the neck, pain in the back, pain in the spine because of bad posture. So we have to be very conscious of this. Um, of course, sabi ng experts, when you are doing online meeting, online class, dapat yung eye level, yung camera. Hindi yung looking down or hindi yung looking up. Because either way, it's not good posture. So you have to make sure that uh, your chair is high enough to put your eye uh, on the level of the camera. Or the other way around, you make the computer higher so that um, eye level ang tingin mo sa camera. Otherwise, you will start complaining of pains in the neck, pains in the back, and all because of wrong posture. Among the young people, we now notice the really shorter attention span especially because of the availability of media, of TV, of Netflix, of YouTube, of so many of these multimedia uh, in the internet easily available for them. This is going to be a crisis for us when they come back to the classroom, <laughs> when they are going to go back to the face-to-face -face setup and then we're there uh, about to give our 30-minute lecture we will have difficulty getting the attention of the students. So all these things, um, um, may payback time yan pagbalik nila sa loob ng classroom. We will need to do a bit of a cranking up for them to be ready again. Uh, and then with this online setup, um, we now see more of this cyberbullying happening, uh, bashing of people in TikTok, in Twitter, in Instagram, in Facebook, whatever social media. And the um, bullies 
cyber bullies are able to get away with it because wala sa eskwelahan eh. Now, the parents can, I mean, uh, schools can say, ah, it's not our problem anymore. Wala naman sila sa eskwelahan eh. So, uh, that cyber bullying, bahala kayo mga parents mag, um, maghanap ng solution dyan. <laughs> But no, if it happens between two students of our school, we may need to get involved or we may need to put in place policies about cyberbullying. But all these are especially uh, highlighted because of the online setup that we find ourselves in. And then while they are, uh, they have the internet to access more apps, more opportunities for creativity, the truth is, dahil kulang ang kanilang interaction with their peers, with other classmates, with other, other um, students, their creativity is stunted. The imagination of the children is stunted. It's something we need to get the parents aware of so that they will help their children at home work out um, developing creativity. Minention ko kahapon, Uh, no, I think it was in another talk with the uh, Holy Angel University parents yesterday more uh, yesterday early afternoon. Parents have to make have to make uh, materials available at home. Uh, reading materials, novels, pocket books. It's not enough for parents to tell their children no more computer games, no more surfing, no more internet. It's not enough to just tell them, stop. Stop using the computer. They have to provide alternatives. I mean, uh, the parents cannot simply say, um, off yung computer yan. Kanina pa kayo nagko-computer game. But what will the kids do? Magtitinginan lang sila? No, there are alternatives. The parents have to make available reading, good literature, Good reading books, good reading materials, or uh, board games. Board games that the kids can use to And play with. Can you hear me? Wait lang po ha. We are in the seminar. Ay, sorry, I have to mute. Okay. So, for example, the parents have to make available at home chess, games of the general, Scrabble, <laughs> those games that we used to play. And they are fantastic materials to develop creativity teamwork, um, strategizing among their children. But it's not enough to simply say, no more computer games, no more uh, com um, internet for you. We have to help the parents make these things available for them so that the children's creativity and imagination and teamwork and um, uh, collaborative work with other, with other children at home can still be addressed. Okay, the video I showed you earlier on uh, life hacks, um, this uh, is addressed by that. But the, the point here is, um, teachers, please realize all these problems have been heightened because of the online setup. Let us make the parents aware of this and let us help them look for solutions or things that they can do in order to address all these problems that are coming up, especially because of this online setup. And then, of course, well, yesterday in my talk to parents of Holy Angel University, I pointed out to them, the research says, with this online setup, children um, now have to contend with pornography. Um, parents have to find ways that their kids are, um, they have all the necessary support and means they need in order to be spared of the pornogra pornography onslaught. I mean, really, even a grade one kid today, basta nasa internet, nasa computer, can be subjected to the most harmful, vicious, pornographic images. It just appears. It just pops up. Or um, especially if uh, 
they are not being supervised, a few clicks of the buttons here and there, and they can access harmful, pornographic, explicit videos. Or maybe not even pornographic, violent movies that can be harmful to them. We have to make the parents uh, aware of this. And we have to, for example, uh, give them ideas on the kind of uh, filters they can use at home that they can install for free because there are many. You Google it, free internet filter, uh, parental controls. They can get them for free if you just Google them. They can download them so that their children are spared of these harmful images. <clears throat> You know, we've been talking, talking about TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of these social media. And um, one reason why we have to be wary, we have to be concerned, is because as we, as researchers have seen, ibang klase ang kultura, ang values ng social media. Especially because of the uh, influence of the West. The the culture that the young people are um, exposed to in social media today is a kind of culture where drugs and lack of sexual boundaries are apparent, uh, where uh, indecency, lack of decency, immodesty, is like the rule of the game. If the parents do not supervise enough, if we are not conscious enough in safeguarding them, and then, of course, here, technology doesn't build the best social skills. Kaya nga sabi natin kahapon, a kid today can spend the whole day without being with other human beings. A kid today can spend the whole Saturday, the whole Sunday, just with his gadget, the um, tablet, the cell phone, the computer. And that's not... Um, developing their social skills. <laughs> and that's why they're affected. If parents are made aware of this, they will find ways that these problems can be addressed. Not to mention, of course, all these have spawned even greater... Sorry. Have even spawned um, greater problems with technology addiction. And with technology addiction, media addiction media exposures. I'm going to show you now the video on um, the importance, the need to educate children, young people especially, on media, the responsible use of uh, media. Every day, we spend eight hours exposed to different forms of media. We practically live with it. It keeps us entertained, informed, and opinionated. Media influences us through news headlines and information we see online, on TV, and here on the radio. It creeps into our daily lives subtly and subconsciously through magazines and advertisements that create and recreate standards of success, beauty, and living. To movies where we are exposed to violence, fantasy, and crooked ideas about love. Even the music that enters our ears are part of media's influence. And every day, our brain processes all these sorts of information from a variety of sources. And sometimes, we no longer wonder whether the information we receive is true or not. We believe it right away. We react to it right away. We no longer are watchful with what enters our minds. We no longer think twice before we respond. We no longer can identify ourselves from what influences us. Yes, media brings people together. It can make us laugh, think, consider. It can make us feel right. But if we're not careful, it can also fill our minds with false information and can make us confused and upset. It can affect our thinking, even the things we desire and who we eventually become. So how can we guard our minds? How can we train ourselves 
to evaluate and filter information from media. We can spare a lot of assumptions by simply verifying information. The answer to that is being media literate. Being media literate is simply taking a step further, digging a little deeper, considering a little longer, and thinking a little harder about the information we get from media. Because what you expose yourself to affects you. Be media literate. Guard your mind. Guard your life. Okay, um, media is very powerful. And again, if you are to engage the parents in the formation of their children, if you are going to help the parents <clears throat> um, help their children navigate this digital world, please make sure you offer a seminar for the parents, a talk for the parents on media literacy, on how they can, for example, make sure that their children are um, spared of the, as I mentioned earlier, onslaught of pornography, wrong ideas, fake news. Uh, you have to find ways of helping your parents, the parents of your children, of your students, uh, equip them in ways that they can help their children be able to distinguish between fake news and right news. How do, what can they do in order to determine, in order to make sure they do not become victims of uh, fake news, historical revisionism, um, etc. Especially on issues of morals, on matters related to the teachings of our mother church on uh, moral issues like abortion, divorce, euthanasia, same-sex marriage, etc. Parents have to be helped because, believe it or not, many of them may not have the um, resources, for example, available for them. But the fact that your, they chose to enroll their children in your school, Catholic school, is a very clear indication Gusto nila ang solid Catholic formation. Okay? Especially nowadays when ang daming mga um, there are people who are spreading wrong things about certain moral issues uh, affected by the Western thoughts, the Western errors on doctrine. We need to help the parents here uh, in this uh, matter. And we can do a lot because we are the educational institution. And I, re I repeat, of all the so many schools na pwede nilang pag-enrola ng kanilang anak, pinili nila kayo. <clears throat> pinili nila ang Catholic school because they are after solid Catholic formation for their children, for their, uh, for their family. Uh, this is another effect of this pandemic, of this online setup, the loss of privacy online. We also need to teach children about this. Na kahit anong ipost nila sa internet, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they are leaving behind what we call digital footprints. This is part of media literacy. Children have to be made aware that whatever they post in the internet is practically permanent. They're leaving behind their digital footprint. I know of some people who were rejected in their job application interview because the HR officer looked into their social media and discovered that they are like this. They are uh, rabidly um, anti-government, that they are... <laughs> because of their social media posts of five years ago, seven years ago. So, um, children have to be made aware of this. Uh, when they leave behind their digital footprints, it has to be according to standards of a Catholic school, according to their um, standards of their Catholic education. 
Okay. Um, we mentioned this already. Everyone is stressed out because of this uh, being plugged in constantly, having to be online. And then I know some of you, um, I've been looking at the number of participants nag fluctuate tayo 170 172 169 kahit tayo mismo we encounter internet problems <laughs> and that adds stress on everyone i mean all of us get affected by this minsan a attend ka ng meeting faculty meeting online and then minsan humihina ang internet mo and you feel stressed you feel tired more than usual and it's not because of what is being discussed it's because natatakot ka ano ba namang klaseng internet to nag naghang nag frozen yung nagsasalita eh, nawala yung sound <laughs> nawala yung so all these are adding to uh, layer new layer additional layer of stress for everyone not to mention the I mentioned yung uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Ayan. So masakit itong uh, itong part because uh, we are in front of the computer typing the whole time and coding or uh, in the um, cell phone. All these are part of effects of this pandemic, online setup, online teaching, online learning. And sadly for young people, who are supposed to be learning empathy with other people, with friends, with their classmates, they're deprived of that. A loss of empathy. That's why I am very afraid, especially for the, the really young kids na nag-uumpisa pa lang to learn social skills and then they're deprived of it because they are not inside the classroom. They're not in the playground. They are not with other human beings. They are facing a camera. They are facing Zoom, Google Meet, um, Microsoft Team, which is just not the same. Empathy among kids is very much affected. Pagbalik natin sa face-to-face -face setup, this is one of the most important things we need to work on. How they can get back that strong, solid sense of Empathy, solidarity, camaraderie, friendship, dealing with other people, dealing with other human beings. And then, of course, um, online games and many games that the young people to play today uh, are violent. Sabi nga ng research sa US, by the time a kid turns 13 years old, he would have witnessed 18,000 murders. From violent movies, violent television series like uh, Game of Thrones. Every episode, there's murder, there's killing, there's incest, there's rape, there's... And then, video games that they play. Where the more, uh, the more uh, you kill, the more points you get, the higher level you go. Yan. Kahit nasabihin mo, zombies lang naman ang pinatay ko eh. It's still killing, uh, shooting, um, Grand Theft Auto, ayan, yung mga ganong klaseng games. No? The, the more you kill, the more points you get, the higher level you go. Online violence, these are all affecting young people today. So what can we do? Well, um, that's what we are here for. Let's help the parents. I've already given you um, certain things. You have to... Uh, reach out to the parents, give them reading materials, share with them articles that talk about uh, the dangers of pornography, the dangers of video games, the dangers. Of, I mean, uh, I know a school that decided to issue a monthly newsletter for the parents as their way of Supporting the parents, helping the parents, engaging the parents. Um, you don't have to have original articles. It's not for profit anyway. You can get materials from the internet. Very good reading materials that you can share with the parents. On a monthly basis, even on a weekly basis. I know another school in Iloilo that does that every week. They pass on to the parents. Libre. By email lang eh. By uh, Viber lang eh. By Facebook group chat lang eh. They pass on good 
reliable reading materials to help the parents get ideas on what else they can do at home to help their children. But let me um, highlight, I have given a lot of problems, dear teachers. I've mentioned <laughs> certain crises that are happening, but let's be optimistic. Let us be optimistic. One is because this is not permanent. This thing that we are faced with right now, online setup, this is not eternal. <laughs> This will end sooner than you can imagine. We will be back face to face. We will be inside the classroom doing best what we have always done best, forming children's character on a face to face basis inside the classroom with the friends, uh, with our faculty friends in the lounge and optimism. God continues to take care of us. Let us stay positive. In fact, you can also uh, uh, console yourself with many good things no? that this pandemic has brought about. Positivity. We think instead of the fact that now we have more family time. Parents have more time to be with their children. Parents are at home and the children are excited to spend more time with their families more than they ever did before the pandemic, before the uh, the air is cleaner than usual because of um, the many months that uh, fewer cars on the road. So um, there are many positive things. And then with the family togetherness, they now have also more time to be able to do family prayer. Of course, we feel bad that we were deprived of Holy Mass, Holy Communion, even confession for too long because of this pandemic. But slowly, we're getting back there, being able to receive our Lord in Holy Eucharist again inside the church. So we look forward to more positive things, optimistic things. Uh, things are not all that bad. But we have to keep on looking for remedies on how to make things better, on how to address the crisis better. What else can we do in order to help the parents make sense of uh, all these things and help their children be able to cope with the challenges presented by this online learning, by this pandemic, by the setup? Um, okay, we keep on hearing these things and I think all of us have become experts already in this wearing masks, social distancing, frequent washing of hands, no touching and all that. But we have to keep in mind that, uh, well, the world has to continue moving on. Our children, the children of the parents of um, uh, our school have to continuously look for ways that the, their children can be prepared for the future, that they, sooner or later, will be able to <laughs> interact socially with other human beings because this is not permanent. This is temporary that we see in the world today. And what we are preparing the young people for is when everything goes back to normal, that they still know, they still know how to develop friendship and trust with other people despite being deprived of that uh, in the past months of the pandemic. Um, as you know, really, this is the number one victim in this whole um, isolation, period of isolation. Personal interaction has been um, stunted, has been affected. So, teachers, we have to find ways by which the students can continue interacting with each other, even on an online setup. Give them group work, make them do group projects, Make them do um, team building exercises that are online. And amazingly, there are many apps, websites that are making available to us technology by which personal interaction, social interaction can continue uh, progressing, can continue happening. Relationship does not have to be strained. And that's what we talked about yesterday. We have to continuously look for ways 
that we can strengthen relationships in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the online learning setup. Uh, our opponent here is too much screen time, but even that screen time can be used for the good. Okay, Especially if that screen time you're giving the children, you're asking the children to, to, to have, is going to develop uh, their relationship with other people because it will mean that they will have to work in teams. They will have to get to know their friends better. But, but we have to systematically think about this. How can we make the screen time of our students still able to develop in them interaction, social skills, communicating with their friends, communicating with um, their classmates, and not be reason to bring about more stress, more anxiety, and more depression. But yes, in the United States, for example, researchers have discovered tumaas itong levels of stress, anxiety, and depression among many teenagers. Yung sinabi ko sa inyo ka ka kanina and kahapon of the pandemic of isolation, everyone is being victimized by this. But we can address it. What can we do? Okay. With added engagement required from parents in online learning, how can they discover the best role to play? We have to get the parents to be the number one cheerleader of their children. Okay? And if you have not transmitted this to your parents, find a way of being able to transmit it to do an email, to do a memo, to do a conference, to do a briefing orientation, or class advisors calling for a meeting with the parents of their students in the class advisory, and then passing on this idea. Parents, please be encouraging to your children. Be the number one cheerleader of your children. Be there to supervise, to check on them, but not only to look for mistakes. Not only to reprimand them, <laughs> not only to make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, etc., but especially also in encouraging them, in motivating them, in telling them, kaya mo yan, anak. Konti na lang. Pabalik din tayo sa face-to-face. Sa -face. Knowing a coach won't be misleading or overly positive, but constructive and goal-oriented. So, uh, kailangan makuha natin ng parents on our side in this particular aspect. And I tell you, I tell you, when you talk to the parents to encourage them to be the cheerleader of their children, makikita nila, ay, interesado pala talaga ang teacher namin for the success of our children. Ang gusto lang naman pala talaga ng teachers is for our son, daughter to be successful. Parents are the primary educators of the children. The home is really their first school. And you know, the first classroom of the children, the heart of the mother. <laughs> the mother who encourages, who motivates, who pushes. That's what we need to get the parents to believe, to realize, to accept that they are the most important element now in the success of their children in this online setup. Because we can only do so much. We cannot even do what we used to do, which is meet the students on a synchronous way every single day. Diba? I mean, I don't think there's any school that uh, yung ganong sinabi ko nga kanina, what we were doing on face-to-face, uh, -face, lilipat lang natin online. Ay, hindi. It's just not the same. <laughs> And then we have to make the parents accept, admit that uh, iba na, nag -iba na ang role ngayon. As I mentioned, what we used to do inside the classroom, disciplining John, calling the attention of Joanna, asking the students to sit up straight, to sit properly, eyes on the board, look here, stop talking. We cannot do those things anymore. We need the parents to pitch in now and from the house or if not the parents, because they're busy with the, their own work from home, 
the guardians, the older sibling, or somebody, but we cannot do it for them anymore at this time. Meanwhile, because we are in the other side of the screen, the parents have to be there supporting learning at home. Hindi na pwede yung bahala na kayo ma'am ha, kaya kami nag-enroll sa inyo dahil we expect you. No, we need their support. As I said, um, well, I always told schools this. Please make sure you have a uh, an orientation for the parents given this new online setup because it's just not the same as before. <clears throat> so, parents, make sure you provide a designated workplace at home. Um, hindi tayo yan. I mean... Teachers cannot visit the schools, I mean, the all the houses, and then making sure that uh, dito ah, ang magiging uh, parang classroom mo. The parents now are the ones who have to be the ones to do that. And yes, unfortunately, for many pa families, it will mean additional investment. You will need to have a good laptop, a good computer, a, um, a good chair where your son, your daughter can sit for hours attending to synchronous classes, working on asynchronous work, asynchronous projects. Not the bad place. Okay, so in the first place, parents should be made aware. Please don't make your son, your daughter do work on bed while lying down. <laughs> um, or even better, don't make your uh, workplace of your child Inside the bedroom. Kaya nga tawag dyan bedroom because it's for the bed. It's for sleeping. Put that in um, the living room or in one corner, in one, uh, in one corner of the house where without distraction, they can attend to their synchronous or asynchronous um, activities. Hindi na sa atin yan. It's the parents who have to, do, to be the ones doing that. That's in the first place, the engagement we expect from them. Help your child have that serious workplace, designated workplace where he or she can productively do schoolwork. And then have a set schedule. The parents have to know the schedule of their children for synchronous or asynchronous uh, activities. They, <clears throat> they have to be provided with the same calendar that you give the students <clears throat> when you expect them to go online, when you expect them to submit, uh, when you expect them to finish an output. Make sure the parents are also given that <clears throat> because now it is going to be their job uh, to see to it that their children follow the schedule because you're not there as we used to be inside the classroom. And then, <coughs> now that the children are, are, are at home the whole time, if the parents don't uh, watch out, if the parents don't supervise this, uy, the refrigerator is always within the reach of the students. Unlike in the classroom, di ba? Bawal maglabas ng pagkain during class. Bawal uh, kumain while the teacher is lecturing. Aba? Ngayon, hindi. If the parents are not there to supervise, the kids can be eating the whole time with their screen off. <clears throat> or maybe not eating the whole time, but eating the wrong thing. Unhealthy food. We need the parents to step in and to get engaged in this business of uh, overseeing the healthy eating habits of their children. That they don't go, be, they, they don't become obese, <laughs> that they don't uh, overeat uh, junk food, unhealthy food. Again, that's not your job. It will have to be the parents doing it. That's another engagement we expect of them. <clears throat> and then, uh, given all this um, toxic environment that we find ourselves in, we need the parents to help provide a positive tome at home. As I said earlier, 
encouraging, uh, motivating, <coughs> especially dear teachers. Now, <coughs> now that we are in this election period, ano, and daming mga negativity coming out in the news, coming out in social media, uh, coming out in prime time TV. We need the parents. We need to engage the parents in helping us provide that encouraging, motivating, positive tone at home. Similarly, because the children are at home the whole time, they are not at school, we teachers cannot provide the usual boundaries we used to, to, to set. For example, uh, punctuality, on time, no to tardiness, uh, submitting work on time, uh, being able to meet deadlines. We used to be able to do that inside the classroom. It was our work, our job <laughs> to make sure the students um, are able to follow and obey those um, rules and boundaries. Now we cannot do it. The parents have to help us in being able to oversee these things. So what am I saying here? Aba, we need the parents now more than ever for the success of the students <clears throat> because of this online setup. Hindi natin kayang gawin on our own. And even better, even better, of course, is if students are able to do what they need to do, what we want them to do, even without supervision of the parents, that they are independent, that they are responsible enough to do what is expected of them because we help them to be independent. That uh, the teachers don't have to be there checking on, uh, John, naumpisahan muna ba yung assignment natin? Deadline yan tomorrow. Please make sure. No, even without the teacher having to do that, even without the parents having to check on their children on this, they will responsibly do it. Balik tayo sa character formation, respect and responsibility, the certificates that I will be passing on to all of you. All of you, by the way, with these three seminars we have, will receive three certificates of attendance to international seminars with the signatures of Dr. Licona and myself, uh, Dr. Licona of the State University of New York. <clears throat> and... Um, Center for the fourth and fifth hours, respect and responsibility. What really we are after in being able to develop among the children. Okay, so um, we need the parents. We have to count on them um, in being able to do all this, uh, accomplish all this now more than ever because of this online setup. And then we need to tell the parents as we too have to take note of this. Please take the concerns of the students seriously. Pag sinabi ng studyante sa'yo, I am stressed, I am exhausted, I am exasperated. Don't think napaka-exaggerated naman itong batang to. Napaka-arte naman itong batang ito. <laughs> we don't know what they are going to do because this is a unique experience. Isolation, deprivation, para kang nakakulong sa bahay, maraming bawal, and then you have to face um, a screen, not real human beings, but a computer screen. All these are affecting, especially the young people, mentally. We have to take seriously their mental health, and when they bring up a concern, Sir, I'm depressed. Sir, I am really sad. I am really, uh, I'm angry about the situation. We have to listen. We have to pay attention. And we have to tell the parents to listen, to pay attention, and to take whatever the concern they bring up seriously. We do. We need to. Kasi hindi ito normal. What they are going to do, what you and I are going to do, online teaching, this is not normal. Uh, there are many things here that we have to take more seriously than usual. Okay? And then, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, please teachers, be forgiving with yourself. Be understanding with yourself 
as we have to be very understanding as well with the students. If before we are able to um, re- demand from the students this much, well, we need to recalibrate it and think. Now we have to also take into consideration availability of strong internet connection, availability of resources. Sure, the internet is there and all that, pero hindi na sila pwede ngayon yung naalala nyo yung reklamo ng mga parents. Dadati, sasabihin ng anak sa kanila at 9 in the evening, Nay, kailangan ko ng kartolina. At 9 in the evening, magagalit ang nanay. Bakit ngayon mo lang sa akin sinabi? Sarado na ang national. <laughs> Bakit hindi mo sinabi kanina? Diba? May ganun tayong mga um, scenarios in the past. Well, the same thing we can say now. Please recalibrate your expectations of the students. Don't require them to suddenly be able to go out and buy uh, Manila paper easily. Because of the situation, especially nung kasagsagan ng pandemic na um, meron pang ano, pass, no? uh, quarantine pass just to be able to go out. Aba, you would be an unfair teacher if during that time you require them to purchase uh, coloring materials, uh, watercolor. Uh, teka muna, let's recalibrate our expectations because things are not normal right now. In the same manner, as I said earlier, teachers don't feel stressed out and frustrated that you have not been as excellent a teacher this year or last year as you were three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. We have to recalibrate our expectations because things are in this setup right now, in this situation this is not a vacation. Hindi porke nasa bahay tayo. <laughs> pa easy-easy. Because as I said, in fact, abay, nagdoble ang trabaho natin. Hindi lang tayo nagtuturo from home. We are also doing chores from home. Cooking, uh, cleaning, washing dishes, lo- doing laundry. Kasi nasa bahay tayo. So all these have to bring about a ibang klasing mindset ang kinakailangan nating ilagay no? <clears throat> but we have to encourage the parents take advantage of the fact that now you have more family time find ways that you can enjoy each other's company more <laughs> that uh, you don't get into each other's nerves we have to help them and we have to make them realize that count your blessings and this is supposed to be one of those blessings that has been forced on us by the situation, by the circumstance. <clears throat> Increase human touch within the family now that you have more time to be with each other. we I don't know how you can do it. Maybe now, uh, after dinner, tingnan nyo, you can perhaps do uh, family games, uh, kahoots, um, Jim Kana uh, as a family. <clears throat> Pero some families, some parents may not realize this or might not even think of this, uh, if this if it is not given to them as ideas. No? Or, in fact, we can encourage them um, be on the lookout. Baka naman because of the stress, because of the setup, you become grouchy, grumpy, angry, frustrated. <laughs> we have to encourage the parents, please, do your best. If you're going to be the number one cheerleader of your children, they need to see you smiling more, encouraging more, spending more time laughing together as a family, deliberately, consciously. Make sure that family life is enjoyable. Uh, Saint Jose Maria Escriva would describe family supposed to be as a bright and cheerful home. <clears throat> and it's the parents who can make it happen. And that is one powerful engagement that they can provide the school. You see, 
it's not about it's not simply about parents getting involved in school activities that's not just that's not the only collaboration that parents can provide it is providing a bright and cheerful home so that the students when they now go to class online class they are not as stressed out uh, uh, with bad vibes with heavy heart <laughs> with a lot of negativity so the homeschool collaboration that we expect of the parents is this please do your part at home and then we will do our part in school uh, in the online setup but we need you especially in this one being the number one cheerleader motivator um, encourager of your children find a way to charge yourself emotionally powered up for the teachers as well as for the stu uh, for the parents <clears throat> um, teachers this is something that you have to be very much on the lookout for making sure that you get enough rest the recharging if for example the school calls for a mental uh, health break we really take it seriously give yourself a real break that will enable you to recover recharge and be able to get back to work later on with the um, energized i mean re-energized re no administrators who may be here you may have to find ways that the teachers can get recharged re-energized for example i encourage you there are many highly inspiring movies about teachers and about teaching that you can make your teachers watch. Okay, faculty, on Friday, in the place of faculty meeting, <laughs> we're not going to talk about problems. We are just going to be, as a faculty, watching a highly inspiring teacher movie. There, that's to re-energize. I mean, Really, we have to consciously look for ways that teachers can take a rest and be re-energized and be inspired to continue on doing what they're doing because it's very tiring. The situation is very tiring. I encourage you, for example, if I have not given you a copy yet, I can pass on to you a copy of um, um, the, how do you call this? The movie uh, of Ron Clark. Yeah. The title is Ron Clark Story. It's available in YouTube. And if you cannot find it, you tell me. I can pass on to you a copy of the Ron Clark Story. It's a story of uh, Ron Clark on his first year as a teacher. And then how he went on to become one of the best teachers in the world. To the point that he is able to put up Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, which before the pandemic, uh, every year, thousands of teachers from all over the world would visit the school, spend a few days there observing what do they do? Why are they probably one of the best schools in the world today? That is a very inspiring movie. Or Stand and Deliver. Or Tuesdays with Maury. The, the um, movie of Hallmark production produced by Oprah Winfrey. That is a very highly inspiring movie about teaching and about um, the teacher, yeah? Maury, Maury Schwartz. So uh, there, but we have to find ways that we can get the teachers recharged, emotionally re-inspired, re-energized because tanggapin natin, the situation is not very healthy um, this online teaching is very tiring okay and then the parents we have to encourage them please appreciate your children and their presence someday they're going to grow old and they're going to have their own family they're going to leave the house leave the nest and you will be on your own <laughs> so while they are there with you appreciate their presence appreciate them for what they are right now um bubbly energetic aggressive sure loud and noisy but someday 
you would prefer that than the silence because they are not there anymore. They are not at home anymore. Um, yes, we have to give, I, I mentioned this already earlier, schools have to find a way of providing parents with media literacy talks, media literacy uh, presentations or uh, orientations or seminars. Now that uh, things are online, no excuse for the parents anymore. Dati pwede silang mag-excuse. Ay sir, busy talaga kami. Uh, traffic eh. One hour to get to your school, hindi kami makaka-attend. Now you can say, okay, ang talk natin for parents on media literacy is 7 to 8 in the evening. Aba, hindi na sila pwedeng makapagbigay ng excuse niya. Nasa bahay in lahat ng tao, 7 to 8. And they just have to plan out their schedule. But yes, we have to find ways that we can orient the parents on how they can be in control of the screen time of the, uh, of the kids, of technology use of the kids. And then maybe even encourage them as you encourage yourself. Maybe we can have a mental health day where we will not log on to the computer, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram, to Netflix. <laughs> Unplug um, for a day so that we can give ourselves a bit of rest. After all, kahit nga yung gadgets, eh, they also need rest. Otherwise, they can get, um, they can conk out. And then because of this sedentary life, I encourage you, as you please encourage parents, find ways of being able to take care of yourselves physically through exercise, through physical activities. As a family, mag-family Zumba kayo. <laughs> or, for example, schools can do that. They can organize Zumba for families uh, online, organized by the school to really encourage everyone and be conscious. Oo nga, ano? We have to take care of ourselves because sound mind, sound body. A sound body in a sound mind and the other way around, physical activities. But uh, everybody needs encouragement. As I have to encourage you, dear teachers, I already told you, thank you, thank you. Maraming salamat that you keep on teaching kahit ganito ang sitwasyon, kahit ganito ang ating hinaharap. But this is not permanent. Matatapos din to. You've been doing a great job so far. Let's keep on. Be uh, hopeful and optimistic. With the children, the parents have to find ways that they can get them in touch with reality. Kaya itong plantito at plantita during this uh, pandemic, it's a very good thing. It's a very beautiful thing. Sabi ng re experts, gardening is one of the best ways to teach kids self-control and uh, delayed gratification. Gardening is one of the most powerful ways that they can learn how to wait, or how to develop in them patience. O nga naman, kasi hindi mo pwedeng mamadaliin ang gardening. You have to wait for nature to take its course. <clears throat> Not to mention, of course, it has been included now as one of the important intelligences, environmental intelligence, together with the visual intelligence, um, etc. Environmental intelligence, uh, love for nature, uh, gardening is a fantastic thing. Well, I've reached the, I think, the, the last point on how we can help the parents. We can encourage them, please resort to the power of prayer. Do not underestimate the power of family prayer. Now that you have more time with a family, pray. And then as schools, we should be the ones at the forefront of developing this. We can organize, for example, um, school-wide rosary rally online or 
uh, as we prepare for December 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we can have a, I don't know, nine days of praying the rosary in preparation for December 8th. As, a fam as uh, families, let's all gather all the families together praying uh, to Our Lady to put a stop once and for all to this pandemic and to get us all back to um, or praying for all those suffering, not just physically, but also mentally and economically. I know many families really grappling, um, having a tough time because of this pandemic, uh, especially because ang trabaho ng nanay is uh, contractual, ang trabaho ng tatay nahinto dahil nagsarado ang restaurant. <clears throat> many um, suffer greatly. If not our own families, the families of um, our students, their relatives, their friends, their neighbors, and then to this sort of prayer and together as one big uh, Paco school, Catholic school family, we will implore the help of Our Lady, the help of God, the help of St. Joseph as we prepare to end this year of St. Joseph. Prayer. Let us not underestimate the power of prayer in helping all of us cope with this setup, with this online um, situation. But always, always, because we want to sow hope and optimism among the parents, among the children, that they see. Hindi sila nag-iisa. Itong pandemic of isolation will be addressed. Because they will realize, uy, hindi naman pala ako talagang nag-iisa. You see, kagabi, sama-sama kami. The families of my classmates, the families of my friends, praying together, imploring the help of God, of Our Lady, in being able to um, face all these challenges. Tough times are a blessing in disguise. It always reveals the true color of the people around us and in the first place the parents should see teachers taking the lead in uniting everyone in solidifying um, um, solidarity in putting in place that uh, idea that uh, you're not alone we feel you we sympathize with you we know what you're going to do that's why we're going to pray together as a family, as one community um, gathering around Our Lady in order to find uh, an end to these um, challenges that we are facing. And that is what we do as teachers, as educators. We are providing them, well, as parents have to be the heroes of their children. We now, as educators, telling the parents, Tulungan natin ang mga anak natin. Tulungan natin ang mga kabataan. We are doing this not just because uh, pinagawa sa atin ng principal, pinagawa sa atin ng, ng uh, administrators, but because really we want you all to succeed and we are um, one with you. Finally, last five items and then we are done with our session today. Tips to give to parents. Some of these I already mentioned, but I checked with the experts. Ito daw ang top tips that they can give to their pa uh, to the parents um, in helping their children in the online setup. Help them build a schedule. We mentioned that already. And let us not fail to give the parents the schedule, the calendar that uh, we expect their children to follow. Don't just pass it on to the children. Make sure the parents have a copy of that and then they are the ones who are going to supervise and oversee the, their children being able to uh, follow the schedule. <clears throat> As we teachers model hard work and persistence by still teaching kahit na mahirap, kahit nahihirapan tayo, I even know some teachers are grappling with technology, with Zoom, with Google Meet, but they continue teaching anyway you are teaching a very important lesson. You are giving a very important lesson to your students. Natututunan nila, grabe, kahit anong hirap, pinipilit pa rin ni ma'am. 
don't don't um, underestimate that. It's a very powerful lesson that they're learning. And for all you know, that's what they're going to be very grateful for for the rest of their life. Hindi nila makakalimutan yan. And in the same manner, let's tell the parents, model for your children at, at home, hard work and persistence. Um, we mentioned this already. I cannot overemphasize it. If we are to be successful in this online setup, parents have to provide this important um, workspace for the children at home. And then um, for you teachers, as you will have to help your child, uh, the, the parents of your children know the online learning platform, whatever it is you're using. If it is Canva, because I know some schools use Canva, others use um, Google Suite, others use uh, LMS, whatever element. Learn it. Invest time in learning it. Ask the help of your co-teachers if you need help in uh, tutoring you. And then get the parents also to know uh, how to make the most out of that learning platform, then you have the partnership with the parents. You have, the, you have engaged them in being able to help their children. <clears throat> and most importantly, let's make use of all the available uh, communication lines, whether it is Viber group among the parents in your class uh, and you there being able to do an um, announcement easily or group chat in Facebook Messenger or um, whatever it is. But please make sure it's very easy for them to communicate with you as you should have an easy time communicating with the parents. 